waiting for you. Yeah. Um, let's look at let's look at Ali's list again. Yeah. Let's talk about this. I didn't get to actually see the list before. That's right. So, uh, let's just run it down. Go ahead, go. Because everybody wants to know what it is. All right, this is Ali Andrazi's list. He's yeah. mono blue grand architect kind of deck. He's won several times with Blight Steel Colossus. I just have to say. Yes, this. he go has ahead. by casting it. Right. Hard casting. Four Thrumming Bird, four Preordained, three Tumble Magnet, two Ratchet Bomb, four Enclave Cryptologist, four Grand Architect, four Everflowing Chalice, three Treasure Mage, two Worm Coil Engine, one Contagion Engine, one Steel Hellkite, two Mind Slaver, one Stoic Rebuttal, only Counter Spell, only counter -spell. Mm -hmm. and two Jace's Mind Sculptor, two Mystifying Maze, 17 Islands, and four Inkloth Nexus. So, and we'll talk about the cyborg when we What get a that. brew. Smash. Yeah. So, uh, Thrumming Bird will turn two for Antrazi there. Flores, turn one's a uh, colonnade, turn two, island go. Ali Antrazi plays an island, plays an enclave cryptologist. In with a thrumming bird, I think. Swings. Yeah. Seems like a good idea. Oh, oh he's gonna, oh, it's okay. waiting. Okay, so mana leak. It's leaked. Right. So thrumming bird in for one. Second and a thrumming second bird. thrumming bird. Let's try something. You do all of Edgar Flores' play-by-play, I'll do all of Antrazi's play-by-play. All right, we'll, we'll do that. Go ahead. Let's try it. Reorganizing mana. Antrazi preordains. It resolves. Flores is at 19. He sees a treasure mage and an ink moth nexus. And draws the ink moth nexus. What else do we see in his hand here? That's a steel hellkite. Looks to me like Flores has uh, spell pierce, Gideon, and at least two lands: Tech Edge <clears throat> and um, either Glacial Fortress or Sea Chrome Coast. And uh, oh, it's a Glacial Fortress. I'm surprised, well, I mean, I guess maybe <coughs> he wants a worm coil, but I'm surprised that Antrazi kept, I think he kept the treasure mage on top. He has um, two six drops in his hand already. But I guess, you know, once yeah. he gets to his, I think he's got an architect too, so once he gets to a point, he can just cast all of them. So, so Flores taps two, gets a, uh, attempts a Stoneforge mystic. Mm -hmm. Checks for his single copy of Stoic Rebuttal. Right, basically, yeah. So Stoneforge Mystic, which he, which he just top decked actually, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, that was in his hand before. And he goes for the, uh, one of them, their swords. Sword of Feast and Famine. Swords are not for decoration. They're pretty dangerous. They are. They'll they cut are. you wide open. You did. I know. It was just funny. I, I just looked over and it looked like you were. I thought. I thought my partner here was falling asleep for a second, but it turns out. I'm just he's... very engrossed in the match. I'm just looking. Anyway, so. Uh, I'm not sleeping. I'm just looking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. I'm just so Inkamoth my... Nexus uh, gets tech edged, and uh, Thrumming Bird's in for two more. Another uh, Stoneforge Mystic off the top for Flores. Um, What does he to do here? So he's got a Spell Pierce, he's got a Gideon, he's got a... Looks like a Day of Judgment. Uh, he goes for the second Mystic. Checks for his non-existent counterspell. Resolves. Says I'll grab the Silvoth Life Staff now. Hmm. And uh, I guess apparently pass the turn. Well, I guess he's got two uh, equipments in his deck. Yep. So he wouldn't actually grab that. I was like, why would he grab that? Because it's there. It's the only two equipment in the deck, so. Alright, so Ali plays his fourth island. He taps three. I think it's going to be Grand Architect. It is. And he can. He have Architect resolves. He might be tempted to try to come in. I mean, like, well, he might be playing around Spell Pierce, but he could also be playing around Mana Leak. But he is going to put tap six anyway. And if he runs up the Hellkite, it'll resolve. But if he ran out, no, he ran out the Mind Slaver, and it gets oh, counter. Spell Pierce. 
Yeah. There's Edgar Flores. I think Flores. that was the only counter magic in his hand, right? But the uh, yeah. I think he just Looks like he drew another one. <laughs> He's got a day of judgment, but uh, not exactly the, what he wants. So goes for uh, play the sword, equip the sword, um, and uh, discards a treasure mage. No, he discards steel Hellkite. Oh, did he? Okay, he took it back like and discarded the Hellkite. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I think that's they're they're talking about that. Next magic players in standard box number six. Player making standard it back. box okay. number six. Please report to the side of the area where Judge Daniel is going to get you started. And I honestly think that, box number six. Uh, that Edgar should have let him take that back. Yeah, see, to me, I saw the treasure mage go to the graveyard. Like that's that that's what I saw and said. So I mean, I feel like well, if it got me enough time to see it and see him discard it, like that's what you discarded. Right, right. Um, I mean, I guess he doesn't. It is so he can it is card. round eight in the uh, in a uh, pretty serious tournament here. It's not F and M. Yeah. But uh, so right. so Edgar uh, got to untap his lands and play a Jace and Fate Seal. I'm just saying I would have let him take it back because I think that uh, you would have rather him had the. I think uh, that as a player, I would have rather him had the the treasure mage. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, thrumming birds and the grand architect take down Jace. Actually, you know what? That's incorrect because at this point he has because he's because he's untapped with the art the art uh, the architect. Christopher Smoots. He has a lot of more mana please. to, to get around still here. So I wasn't thinking about that when I said that. So never mind. Because he could go in for a slaver with that, uh, with the treasure mage and actually resolve it. I'm trying to figure out how he killed Jace with two thrumming birds and a grand architect. Because the thrumming birds are pumped from the uh, architect. Oh, that's right. That's what it is. And day hits. I'm, what is going on here? Yeah, I'm not sure. Didn't he just day of judgment? He just day. Why is there still a, a Stoneforge Mystic on the board? Oh, did he? Oh, he mystifying mazed it. That's what happened. Oh wow, good call. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> Very confused for a second. I thought that was it was a, a pretty process. interesting. Yeah, I was confused too. No, that was an interesting play. He said, "I'll swing with my Mystic," and he says, "All right, mystifying maze." Like, all right, fine. I'll uh, kill everything and get back. Get mid. my guy back. Yeah, it's pretty good. So here comes a call. Okay, that's the only time I'm going to do it all day. All right, good. All right, so he gets Thinking. a Squadron Hawk. And uh, look, counts his cards in his hand. Look, he has four, so he can he can grab all he three. Five. He may have five. I, I couldn't quite tell. But uh, apparently he said, I'm getting this many, and I'm uh, passing him. No, he has four. So. Already swim. Trazi's board has been swept. Flores seems to be on a pretty uh, seems to be in a pretty strong position right now. There's a hell kite that he can't cast in his hand. Yeah, no more Grand Architect. <clears throat> he does have Grand Architect right now. There it goes. Yeah. I mean, no more that was in play. Now right, he, has, right, he right. has a new one. So. So Flores untaps, draws a Seachrome Coast, plays it, looks to equip uh, the Squadron Hawk with a Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, looks like he's trying to consider using some of that mana before he, uh, yeah, which he does, using some of that mana before he swings in. Uh, he plays a, a Hawk, doesn't need to search because they're all in his hand. Right. Uh, gets to untap his lands. Uh, looks like Antrazi discards an Everflowing Chalice and uh, Flores Taps five for a Gideon. A pretty shiny Gideon. Brendan, as always, has judges hovering over his opponent over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it looks like. Uh, 
Ali had to swing into Gideon. And uh, Steel Hellkite hits play. Is the, No, I'm sorry, he didn't. I was going to say, I think he tapped it for mana. So yeah, he, that's what he did. He tapped the Grand Architect for mana and played the Steel Hellkite. Thanks, uh... I think that's Mark Aquino versus uh, Brennan Hurst over there. Yep, it is. Awesome. But over here, Edgar Flores is uh, preordaining. Gets a planes. Stacks his attackers. Got uh, two squadron hawks, uh, one of which is equipped with Sword of Peace and Famine. Although he uh, moved, he just moved no. the moved the sword to Gideon. So wow. And plays another squadron hawk. He's got one mana up for a spell pierce, so, uh, you know, if he needs it. And he, you know, does have one in hand. Uh, Ali looks to be in a bit of trouble at the moment. It's a great start for Flores and much less explosive uh, game for Antrazi. I think uh, a lot of that has to do with the counter magic in Flores' deck. Yeah, I think that's that's true. But, I mean, it's not like Ali didn't know that this was a list he'd be facing, so it may just be... Number 11, please report to the cemetery where Judge Daniel was going to get started. It may just be that Ali uh, just didn't see the cards that he needed to. Please, and now draft number 11, please report to the area. Your draft is waiting on you. So uh, Edgar's hand looks like it's Spell Pierce, Jace, Silvok, Lifestaff, and Deprive. Taps to equips the sword to. Uh, I believe it was is a Squadron Hawk. Yeah, it's under there. Yeah. And swinging in. Made made Gideon into a, a dude. Um, trying to figure out which he wanted to block there. I think he mazed the hawk. Yeah. Did he eat the six from uh, Gideon? I think he must have. The fact that that uh, architect lived. He didn't have the Hellkite out anymore. No. Right? <laughs> so I believe he just drew another Jace, but. Uh, so he, uh, yeah. yeah. Ali says, all right, scoop him up. You have way too much of a board advantage right yeah. now. It really, you know, it didn't look like Ali could get a hand, you know, get a foothold on that game. Um, that time, you know, Call Go kind of performed exactly as it's supposed to, just putting on the pressure and then uh, holding down the fort with counter magic. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, Ali, uh, Ali just, you know, he had a little bit of pressure early with like the thrumming birds and then the, uh, and the Grand Architect, but just that day of judgment that wiped the board, he never really recovered. Right. Uh, I imagine he brings in, uh, I imagine Ali would bring in the gates here. Seems good, yeah. Ratchet bombs, maybe. Um, tumble magnet, blight yeah, steel. Yeah, probably tumble definitely magnet. Definitely tumble magnet, blight steel. The gates, almost definitely. And ratchet bomb really could go either way, I think. Why definitely blight steel? Just curious. Because he said that that card was the one that was eating Kalko for breakfast. Okay. Did we talk to him? I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> to say I don't remember Wait, him saying that. Somebody said, said it. That? that somebody <laughs> said that he said it. Okay, maybe that that. Makes I sense. heard from a friend of a friend <laughs> that his friend told him. All right, so looking at the call go list at uh, Edgar's sideboard, he's got ratchet bombs, uh, which could uh, could be helpful against. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess. The Grand Architects, the Thrumming Birds, but I mean, that's going to take out his own creatures as well, so. He's got Alsks, 
Divine Offering. Divine Offering, I think he should bring in, because uh, we've got, uh, you know, Ali is obviously playing some artifacts. Big that, splashy uh, artifacts, nice, yeah. Nice targets for it, so Divine Offering seemed like a good idea. Uh, sort of body and mind. Seems good against uh, Blue Deck. Yep. Don't bring in the Mortar Pod. Yeah, I don't think the Mortar Pod's coming in. Elspeth, I just, I, I love Elspeth. <laughs> bring her in. Bring her in. But, uh, I don't know. She may not belong in this deck. She does uh, kill a lot of artifacts, though. though she does. She has to go ultimate to do it. Uh, another deprive. I think. I think he probably brings in the, the deprive because, well, he's gonna obviously bring stuff in. He's gonna need to take stuff out. Probably cuts the life staff. Um, yeah, life staff seems a little unnecessary. Yeah, actually, I'm not really sure uh, how much he wants to change from his main deck because I mean, he wants to bring in the divine offerings. I think I would, I would think. But beyond that, like, yeah, I mean, what do you cut? Well, you want to bring the sort of body mind in? Too. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, and sort of body mind. I'm sorry, but I mean, so what do you cut? That's four cards. Like, you can cut the Silbok Life Staff. Maybe he I would mean, even cut the Sword of Feast and Famine. Right. I don't know. I don't know, because it seems like that's <clears throat> such a huge advantage for a control deck to be able to, like, tap out and then then untap. Right. That's the whole thing with Sword of Feast and Famine. It's basically, like, it is... It's See, what... You know, this is... Shaheen was saying this in his article uh, the other day about how, you know, the thing that makes blue control decks kind of fair is that they can't tap out on their turn because they need to keep the mana open for counter spells. But Feast and Famine breaks that rule. Right. Let's them tap out on their turn, get in there, and then untap and, and, and mana open mana for counter spells. Yeah. So it's pretty nuts. But uh, So Ali on the play goes Island, uh, Preordain. Edgar picks up a uh, Stoneforge Mystic and goes with a Preordain of his own off of uh, Seachrome Coast. I'll leave with the turn two thrumming bird. Thrumming and, bird, uh, how awesome. Edgar goes uh, turn two island and Stoneforge Mystic. Or Squadron Hawk, Squadron Hawk. Say, just, just get one, I mean, he only has, he has six, six cards in hand, so. He passes the turn to Ollie, who uh, cuts his deck. Ali decides he's going to preordain as well. We basically had a battle of the preordains here. Plays a mystifying maze five, and five. gets a chalice on one. Quite interesting with the thrumming birds. Yeah. Although thrumming bird can't get in right now with the uh, squadron hawk. Right. Edgar plays a Plains, taps an Island, then a Plains, or a Stoneforge Mystic. That's pretty much what I expected. Um, let's see what he grabs. Does he grab Body in Mind here? Does he want a piece of them? It's a tough call. There's Body in Mind. Yep. I mean, Body in Mind seems obviously so good. Giving uh, his Hawk protection from blue, and uh, Ollie has no way of blocking it until he gets Steel Hellkite or something, right? Yeah. Uh, Mystifying Maze will help, though, uh, when he can activate it. True. Well, he, did he just draw a land? So, yeah. Yeah. So well, he, he is on the mana to activate it now. Yeah. But do very little else. True. Yeah, so he, uh, he's got a Ratchet Bomb in hand. Right? The Tumble Magnet, that'll help. There we go. And he had Spell Pierce back up, and... Great nice. success. Yeah. So the tumble magnet taps down the bird, and uh, looks like the thrumming bird can now get in, proliferating the tumble magnet uh, counter right back on there and giving a chalice uh, an extra counter. Yep. That's uh, that's why you play thrumming bird. I'll so add a counter to that. Add a counter to that. That, that uh, tumble magnet, basically free activation right there. So 
Both both players are at 19 right now, right? Uh, should be. Yeah. So Edgar plays a glacial fortress. Now he did board in the oust. Yep. It's kind of like, wow. Do you want to use that on a throwing bird? Or? It does seem like it. It's actually it's not the throwing bird that's so dangerous. It's the proliferate on the uh, the guys that's so dangerous. So, yeah. So he goes with the um, mystic, drops the sword. Hawk picks it up, swings in, mills Ollie for ten. God, I'm loving Paul Go. I just. Uh, this this kind of version of Paul Go, like uh, this is the version that I like. Yeah. It's classic. Very very controlling with the aggression in there as well. Nothing cute. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you, you can call Stone of Forge Mystic cute, so. But I mean. But I mean, it's it's becoming, it's, it's more than just a cute thing now. It's it's really kind of a staple essential. Of this deck. Yeah, it's essential to it's essential to standard in general. Yeah. So uh, there's the players. Edgar Flores in a commanding position right now. So now it uh, looks like Ali is going to have to probably stop getting going in with that thrumming bird uh, and uh, well at this point he can get in with the thrumming bird if he wants but he wants to hold that tumble magnet back for that whatever it is that's got that sword. Yeah. He's going to have to force uh, force Flores to re-equip Basically, yeah. To something, you know, to, to the stone forge mystic. But there's a ratchet bomb that will help, especially again with the uh, proliferate. So he's gonna give it a, a counter immediately. Uh huh. Now he uh, so taps four. Is gonna be a Jace. It's, he's got Jace condemn and something else. As you say, I don't know what that other thing is. I have a feeling it's gonna be Jace. All right. Well, that's a heck of a yeah recovery a of, there. Exactly. So uh, he bounces the wolf token with Jace. Uh, in with the throwing bird, get the, a ratchet counter, pump the chalice up, get a tumble bag counter, put Jace back up to three. Wow. Amazing. Uh, the, the, look at that. Uh, now you want to oust the throwing bird, I think. He's tapped out, right? Uh, oust that throwing bird before it gets out of hand. I mean, uh, this is just me. I don't know. I could be wrong. It's good. He can grab it right back with Jace. Right. Uh, to replay it, but at least it holds him back for from the proliferate temporarily. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe that's a bad move. I just. Well, yeah, I mean, it would also buy him a turn to keep his uh, body in mind. I don't know if he's gonna blow up the sword or if he's gonna blow up the two creatures. Yeah. To me, he still has the tumble magnet to uh, to resist. You know. Yeah, because if he blows, if he puts that uh, that ratchet bomb up to three and blows it up, then. He gets his tumble magnet as well, and tumble That's magnet true. is taking care of the sword, whatever's got the that sword. That is right very now. You know, true. Tumble magnet's making a difference. So, so actually, oust would be if he's going to do that. Oust would be a bad play right now because he would he would lose his own throwing bird to the uh, yeah the ratchet bomb anyway. Right. Good call. So that you don't want to waste a card on that. Uh, I see what you're saying. But I think a Gideon might hit the battlefield right now, and that'll he, stop the. So, Oh, okay. Jace out the Jace. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. I think it's a good play, yeah. I didn't although, see the Jace. Although the, he obviously wasn't thinking about that in the first place because he attacked the Jace. <laughs> he attacked it with the Mystic, changed his mind. He just, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, he just must have changed his mind after attack. Maybe realizing just how quickly the proliferate can get out of hand. Absolutely, yeah. Although Gideon would have stopped that, but so here comes the treasure mage. So that's an, yet another three drop that's uh, kind of making it not seem so attractive to crack a ratchet bomb on three. Because he's now going to wipe his treasure mage and his tumble magnet, Hope just to, just and his ratchet bomb, obviously, just to kill a sword. Right. You know, right. doesn't actually seem like it's. Help what he'll probably do is he'll probably swing, proliferate the tumble magnet and the chalice again, and then maybe on, on his opponent's turn, yeah. blow everything up. 
So that if anyone does try to make off with it while you are otherwise engaged, they will have to make off with your leg as okay, well. Okay, yeah, pretty much that exactly what he did. Yep. What did he grab with Treasure Mage? I didn't see it. Oh, uh, uh, Mind Sleeper. Okay. Flora is trying to figure out <laughs> what actually can happen here. Proliferate makes things a little more uh, complicated. It looks like that chalice is on four, right? So okay, so chalice he's going on going four. To, he says like, I gotta go to combat. He uses the tumble magnet to tap down the squadron hall. I think he's gonna sit let that ratchet bomb sit there until he absolutely needs it. Yeah, I mean it's it's. Just uh, right now, it's just presenting a problem for Edgar because now he he doesn't really want to play, you know, a squadron hawk because right now you just blow them all up. Although he could just grab a couple more, but he does play the Gideon, and he plus twos the Gideon. He did have the option of killing the Thrumming Bird there, but he decided not to. Yeah, he could have he could have killed the Thrumming Bird with uh, Gideon. So. Right. Well, the Thrumming Bird won't proliferate and does hits the player. Right. Okay. That actually makes more sense. I, I was thinking if it connects, like. Right. I right. Actually, yeah. Attacks and. I've not blocked. yet played with or against Thrumming Bird. Yeah. Uh, so. Or maybe I have played against Thumbing Bird in the Limited, but I just don't feel like I remember uh, seeing it very often. So here comes Slaver. Yep. Slaver resolves. And Slaver is activated. He cracks the Slaver, yeah. So I have a feeling Gideon's going to... Oh, no, no he could... Uh, yeah, I don't know what he's going to do here. Tumble Magnet and uh, Edgar's own Gideon seem like options. Um, he could play the Squadron Hawk. He could actually play Squadron Hawk, search up all of his other Squadron Hawks, play them all, and then use the Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, that, that could really, that could really be a problem. At that point, he's waiting to. Dream Ripper. Well, I mean, he's got. Well, he's got a couple creatures, and of course, he's got uh, probably Colonnade in the deck somewhere. Not seeing it right now, though. So he casts Hawk. Is he going to search? I know fail to find isn't you know is the right thing most of the time, but search up the other Hawks, and you can clear his whole board. Clear the Hawks right out clear, of the deck. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure, Ollie knows this. But he's not searching. No, he's not. Huh. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, Flora still has to draw a hawk to get yeah, a Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it seems like... It seems like he would just grab all his hawks. So he's going to oust one of his own guys. See, now he could have... Uh, see, now he could... I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm a, I'm He could have done that first. And right. then play a squadron hawk. And then play the hawk, it. search up all the hawks. Yeah. And then just and then wipe the board. So But we're not Oh they used the minus magnet, two. Yeah, tumble magnet tapped the uh tapped That's the squadron awesome. hawk and Gideon. Two sided it. uh icy assassin combo. Yeah. The cooperative. Yeah, both both players. And uh I think he's cracking his fetch land. He's gonna fail to find, I would hope. Naturally. He's gonna look through the deck, though. <coughs> the he's gonna shuffle away the hawk. Right, right. But he's taking a look at how he sideboarded. Was nice. that a mortar pod? Was that a mortar pod? He stopped on something that looked like mortar pod. Oh my goodness. Mortar pod's not so good when none of your hawks are around. But he, Edgar, I mean, uh, Ali didn't wipe the hawks, so. He's keeping that ratchet bomb though, that's good. You know, he's still uh, having that leverage there. Yeah. If absolutely necessary. Uh, he's uh, he's tapping, like, put some equipment into play, also add some mana. 
That's it. Did you see that he, he uh, activated the stone? Yeah. Forge? Pretty funny. Mind Slaver is such a weird card. It makes you really think in ways that uh, no other card does. It's, a, it's such a cool card. It's, like, I I'm, I'm excited to see it finally possible, happen. Possible, right? Like, I just want to make really terrible plays. Again, I need to switch back. What are you looking for? What's up? Our switch. So Ollie has free reign right here, and uh, he's he's using it. He tapped a chalice for another tumble magnet. And after swinging in with a couple guys, uh, the treasure mage and the thrumming bird and the grand architect, day of judgment from Flores, and he has an island in hand, which I believe he will hold just to uh, make Ollie at least think there's something there. Uh, well, apparently that was game. I think Ali swung in, but... Well, there we go. They're going to game three. One and one. <laughs> Must have set him too far back at that point. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe it was just a matter of let's have time for another game rather than draw. Yeah. It's just uh, Ali comes with some comes up with some of the more like exciting decks. He's very uh, he just seems like such an up and coming like rogue deck builder. Like I mean, up and coming maybe uh, may, maybe I'm a little late with that. Right. But I mean, he's he was the guy playing uh, Turbo Land last year. Yeah. At uh, I mean, he what, wasn't it? Pioneered the deck, right? Was that at Philly? It was at Philly. Yeah, Star City Philly. Philly last uh, June, I think. Yeah. And he, and, he won um, with it, right? No, 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 no. He, no. he won at PTQ he... for Amsterdam with Turbo Okay. Land. He finished but, fifth place. Yeah, he was in top eight. That's what I remember. I think in the same top eight that uh, Dave Heilker was in. Yep. Right? From Motion sure Drop, was. who we had in the booth a little while ago. Uh, yeah, he, he's just very good at building decks that people aren't... Uh, aren't prepared for mm -hmm. and I think that's a huge advantage for him people just don't know what they're expecting and even when they figure it out it's kind of like so so that's what you do I don't have anything to deal with that <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything I don't know what I'm doing you know honestly you know who, who we haven't or at least I haven't heard from in a while hmm. Conley Woods like has he ha, I mean what has he been building decks still or is he yeah I mean he's still doing his, his thing he's Conley yeah, but I mean, like, I haven't heard about many of his decks lately. Yeah. They, for a while there, there was always a story about well, some crazy deck he He built. just had that one that was, uh, wasn't it at Worlds with the, uh, crazy graveyard combo with, like, ne uh, Necro, now I'm forgetting the word, now I'm forgetting the name of that card. Why am I suddenly blanking on that card? It's the one that had, gets all the... Necroticus, that's right. That's saying Necro, Necro. So yeah, Necroticus. Like he had that Necroticus deck. Uh, just wasn't, wasn't that at Worlds? So I mean, that was just a few months ago. Shaheen again with the uh, with the thumbs up. Yeah. Ooz and Oz was the name of the deck. Mm. Did he play, I mean, so um, did he uh, play in Denver? I'm sure he did, but I didn't see the list. In Denver, right? So meanwhile, uh, the game is off to a blazing fast start. I think they're just trying to play fast now. I mean, I don't know how much time's left in the round. If you want to run around and see the clock right there, uh, but uh, Flores has already landed a Stoneforge Mystic and now ousted a Thrumming Bird. Twelve minutes, still plenty. Okay, of so time twelve minutes, but a, a game, in, but I mean, game but they need to go fast. So I think there's a, is that a what sword is in his hand? Is it Body and Mind? Yeah. He, so he he Stoneforge Mystic got a Body and Mind. And then ousted uh, Entrazi's turn two Thrumming Bird. Entrazi goes for a second preordain of the of the game. Um, looks like they might be going bottom bottom. No. I'm trying to consider between looks like an island and a Thrumming Bird. 
Oh, he just left them both on the top, grabbed the Thrumming Bird, plays a Mystifying Maze, and plays that Thrumming Bird. So, uh, it's the same Thrumming Bird, I think, that was just ousted. End of turn, Feast sense. and Famine comes yeah. into play? Oh, well, it was Feast and Famine. I thought it was Body and Mind. Unless, um, he has, unless he has both in his hand. But, he might uh, have the other one in his hand, who knows? I thought I saw Body and Mind, but uh, Feast and Famine uh, picked up by the Stoneforge Mystic. Plays a Tectonic Edge. Plays a Squadron Hawk. Is he holding two negates in his hand right now? Who? Yeah, at least one. Antrazi. Yeah, he's uh, holding yeah, both he's got of his two sideboard negates. negates. So, uh, Which honestly don't seem to be doing too much for him. Well, he can't counter the, the equipment when the right. Stoneforge Mystic drops it into play. And it can't counter the Squadron Hawks. Basically, it seems like it's good counters for counter spells uh, at the moment, or Day of Judgment, but right now Edgar has board advantage with the uh, creature and the equipment, uh, creatures and the equipment, so not many Day of Judgments uh, at the moment. Seem <laughs> no Day of Judgment coming up very soon yeah. for uh, on Flores' end, because he's got a better board. Now there's Grand Architect, that's some something. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, he chumped with the Thrumming Bird last year. Yeah. So Flores uh, draws his card. Still doesn't have negate so mana up. It's going to tap, tap some. Uh, oh, so yeah, he moves the equipment. Makes sense. So he can almost surely get in there. Plays a colonnade. This is what I love about the Feast and Famine too, where you can play your comes into play tap land. Yeah. And then untap it. I mean, it's just awesome one extra little bit of a uh, well, little bit of value can, there. He can so. edge that uh, mystify maze too. Yeah. So he, he gets in, and Trazi discarded a negate, one of those negates. Yeah. Uh, Flores now preordains so his Gideon, Gideon and Divine, divine Offering. Divine Offering, yeah. Divine Judgment. And uh, puts them both on top, grabs the Gideon. And he looks like, uh, looks like he's going to go for another Hawk. I think he's going to play Feud Killer's Verdict right here. He's feud Killer's Verdict. Isn't that uh, from Lorwyn? So there he goes, Tech Edge, the Mystifying Maze. Yep. That's uh. That's great right now for for Edgar because that maze can be a problem for those equipped creatures. Draws a Mind Slaver. Yeah, Mind Slaver. We saw how good it can be, but he, at the moment it's not... Not very good right now. Yeah, not going to help. He does have uh, two Grand Architects. So he taps... Or is, is he... A, he's not attacking, is he? He is attacking, okay. So nothing there. They just bounce off each other. Pass the turn. I'm not sure why, why attack. I mean, just try to get a little damage in. Possibly. Maybe. I don't know what he was bluffing there. I don't think he was bluffing anything. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, that's, oh, oh, that's right. That's right. That's what it was. They pumped each other, right? Why? Well, I keep forgetting about them pumping each other. Yeah. So that's why he did it. Well, apparently Flores didn't realize it either. No, I mean, but Ali didn't say anything until Flores was taking his next turn. So here come two hawks. He, uh, he doesn't search. Gets in there with the hawk and the sword. Untaps his mana. Plays a Gideon. Says, uh, kill your Grand Architect. So if you'd like to play an Omnid then now would be a great time to sign up. Things aren't looking good for Antrazi here. No, not... We are really cursing the people who we uh, request to see in these, uh, yeah, <laughs> these right? future matches. Although I'm really loving Flores' deck, so I'm, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not unhappy with that. Uh, wrong with, with that. So here he goes. He nice. activates a colonnade, activates Gideon. I'm in with everything. What do you want to do? So, uh, how much damage is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I think. He pretty much has to block the Gideon, right? I guess. Right, I see fifteen on board. If I'm if I'm looking, there's ten from the Colonnade and the Gideon, and then uh, three from the Hawks and two from the Sword. So fifteen. So that puts should put Antrazi to two. Edgar goes for another Hawk. And uh, passes the turn. It does have a divine offering in his hand. There and he goes. There it okay, is. so Flores takes that match. Stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> what was this? Tassels? I don't know. Well, so just a few minutes left in the round here. We just saw uh, Edgar Flores with a classic 